Hey guys, welcome back to another video of Star Trek Fleet Command. So I want to make this video because I'm going to be talking partially about the game and I'm also going to be talking partially about the NVIDIA Shield TV, which mine is coming today. And I did a lot of research on it, um, but I'm going to get to that in a minute here. So as far as Star Trek Fleet Command goes, we've had some interesting events come up in the past couple of days. And um, I really like them. I, I think the Alliance help event was amazing. It was one of the first events that I can think of where the Wallet Warriors could not have an advantage over other people. Because no matter how many resources that they would contribute to get you know, their points every time they clicked on one of those buttons on the bottom, they only got one point. The same thing as getting getting those help outs. That was one point each. And um, we did we did an amazing job. Huge shout out to the Psy Alliance um, because we came out on top with that one. And uh, FX was was definitely trailing us on that event. <laughs> we were keeping a very keen eye on that. Um, so huge shout out to FX for coming in with 91,000 points. Because as you can see, Fenix had 49,000 points. And so you can see the top two teams in that event. They they definitely, they were grinding it out. Um, we were we <laughs> we were blowing up ships left and right, <laughs> not letting not not doing any kind of speed ups. Telling everyone, you know, jump on those helps, jump on those helps right away. And we kind of you know just stayed with the course on that, and did such an amazing job. So uh, great job to my alliance on that. And then the following day, we got live target practice. And I can't, so for, for this event, in, in my view, in my opinion, Scopely did something so right with this. So right. So they allowed every player to come into Earthac, Perleone, and Constina with a Findra, Tala, or Jellyfish. And the two-star Jellyfish. And basically just blow each other up. And so what I what I really liked about this is, one, it gave everyone the chance to participate without feeling one person had more control over the other. Now, there are a lot of people crying in uh, Galaxy Chat, oh, this is unfair, these level 40 players, because they're researched, they're blowing me up. I'm a level 28, and because of the, the way I crewed my jelly those level 35s were blowing up on my ship. And so this is where it really comes into strategy. This is probably one of, I would say, best progress points that Scopely has come up with because it allows strategy in a strategy game. This is not just clicking on a ship, blowing it up, and moving on. This is actually some, some really great strategy. And so you can definitely definitely play with crewing your ship the right way as long as you know you have those crew members crewing them the right way and really maximizing this event it was great rewards it was low resources needed to repair um and it was it was just wonderful i really enjoyed it a lot uh side note i'm going to predict that they're coming up with a north star kumari uh, Voclis and um, Kara uh, PvP event because everyone has those ships as well. And so you definitely won't catch me tearing up those ships. What I like about the two star events is it allows us the opportunity to tear up these ships, have them have them ready, and then scrap them and getting three star materials plus points for all these several other events. And then we can recycle through that. I definitely think this is an event that should be replayed on a more um, solid basis. I think that possibly it should not be locked down to certain systems. 
um, allow more strategy in various other systems so that you know two alliances can pair up and they can play pvp between each other and kind of make it a little bit more interesting in that perspective but it is a great event then we had the strengthen your fleet so this one <laughs> i actually scored by ranking up those two star ships so when i needed the um g2 uncommon i had a whole bunch of it on hand so i just kept using a bunch of it and i found my, i found i was getting points for uh g2 common so that was that was an interesting thing there so this was a good event i found a way to max that event that was pretty simple and then we have the spirit decor and this one was just an alliance help on a solo level and really easy to max out 60 helps 60 helps very simple great rewards it, that was a lot of fun and a lot of these came through at the same time when you started pvping then you were doing all these helps upgrading your ships that sort of thing um and let's see here so a couple of these events i'm not a big fan of uh for instance this um using g3 and g4 to get these points but only top 25 are going to be ranked and win rewards an avatar nobody wants to burn resources for an avatar i'm sorry scopely that's just a, a no-go for the most part then this one is completing Borg missions and gaining Borg shards, if you're lucky enough to gain Borg shards. However, you can also go into the event store and spend your tokens on event shards. And what I have been doing, because I was using my Bordis, and I was like, oh, this is really cool. Because as you know, on my other account, I use my, my Saladin primarily. What I found about the Bordis was, <laughs> one, it is so incredibly slow. Like, that thing moves so incredibly slow, I'm like, come on. I, I, I literally can't outrun anyone in it. Um, I can barely get to my NPC before the system interceptor is getting me. Um, there is literally no racing anyone to get anywhere on that thing. Um, the problem, the other big problem with the Bordis versus the Saladin is the Saladin only has two guns. The Bordis has three. So you are spending so many more resources to upgrade that Bordis. So I immediately just jumped over to my Saladin and I got that thing up to like 700k already. Um, so I was pretty happy about that. So what I've been using my bark points for is to buy Uncommon Crystal. Because as you can see here, if you buy 10 chests at 19,000 points, you get 50 Uncommon Crystal. And I'm like, score all day long, I'll take that. Because I need it really bad. Because the parts on my Sally are about 800 Uncommon right now. And I actually only got one left. Um, as you can see, I only have 35 Crystal. Because I burned everything on <laughs> my Impulse Drive, which was a really good thing but that was 800 and so it's asking for another 800 crystal um so this one will probably take some time um however i am very happy with the saladin of course i i knew i would not be disappointed with the saladin but my suggestion is if, if you're thinking what initial ship to get hands down go for that saladin it only has two guns versus the other two ships have three guns they are going to be much more difficult to upgrade and tear up because of that um a lot of you know about this, but for some players who are just getting to level 28, maybe if you're level 26 and you're getting into that that space, I would highly suggest getting the Saladin. If you're not fed aligned, I would get fed aligned. Um, there, there, it's a it's a no brainer. So, um, otherwise, you're going to be spending a lot more when your opponent who has a Saladin will be spending a lot less. So. Um, really good job, I think, on the Borg events. I'm really looking forward to 
the Borg Cube that is coming out to kind of see how that looks, what kind of engagement that's going to be. Looking forward to these events. I think Scopely so far has shown us that we're not just going to get mining, domination, and faction hunts. They're actually trying to switch it up and turn on more of the PvP and do it in a way that um, that people are not going to be out a whole bunch of resources. Now, keep in mind, these are still going to take resources. Those ships can definitely be expensive if you're repairing 40, them 45 times. Um, so what I would say is if you're, if you're a lower level player and you are finding that you can't ever beat another ship, partner up with a friend, say, I'm going to be on the edge of the system. What's your warp time? I'll make sure I warp in at the same time. Um, do something like that. Uh, switch back and forth wins and losses. So you can definitely work through that. I mean, when you're playing this game, you should be making friends outside of your alliance. If all you're ever doing is crap talking other players who are in other alliances, it's going to make events pretty hard because a lot of these events can be done really well with a partner outside of your alliance. So highly recommend that highly recommend making multiple friends because you know people get busy and, and things are going on and, and you have a certain time where you have to get this done so definitely you know there, there's a reason you want to be friendly to people um but other than that like i said at the beginning of this video i am getting my nvidia shield tv um, Best Buy is delivering it today, and I'm really excited about it. If you don't know anything about it, it is a streaming box like a Roku. Um, I actually use my Amazon Fire Stick, and that's the reason I'm buying the Shield TV is because the Fire Stick is just so clunky. It doesn't respond fast enough. It's actually pretty slow. Um, I was going to buy a Fire TV Cube. Then I saw this and I saw the reviews and I watched a lot of them. And then I looked at the gaming side of it. And the gaming side of the NVIDIA Shield TV is mind-blowing. If, if it can do everything that everyone is saying, it's just mind-blowing. So basically, you get access to all the, all the games that NVIDIA has made itself. They're free to stream. You can buy an external uh, gaming remote controller. They're free to stream on that on that console. Additionally, you can purchase other platform games and play them on the NVIDIA. Here's a big thing that comes into play for PC gamers. Your Steam account is accessible on the NVIDIA Shield TV so that you can play everything in your Steam account on your television. And that to me is something I really wanna check out because there are a lot of PC exclusives on my Steam account that I really wanna play. And as you, and if you're a PC gamer and a console gamer, what you're aware of as well is that PC, PC games typically get more features than their console counterparts. And for example, Civilization VI, the game I play all the time, they have people making mods on PC that is not done on console. And it's the mods that I really want to get from Steam. The, the player developed mods and civilization does a really good job of of opening up their their software and their platform to allow individual players to make these mods it's actually a really great company and I, I just love what they do um, but that's not the only game uh, some of the classic Star Trek games that were made for PC that are on Steam I really want to play on my TV and so um, it does have a screen record capability. Um, you plug in your headset into your gaming controller. And so I'm definitely going to be playing with that. My ask to all of you is when you do see my videos that are being done from the NVIDIA TV Shield, let me know if there's any kind of issues. Uh, I'm, I'm concerned with volume. 
I'm concerned with um, the video image. Does the video image look good or does it look like crap? Um, because there's a lot of settings within the shield that um, allows me to make those modifications on the back end, which after seeing that review, after I ordered it, I was, I was just like floored. I'm like, oh, this looks awesome. I really want to stream from my television because most of, most of the best games that I play are on my television, not on my phone. So definitely um, keep an eye out for that. Definitely check out the NVIDIA Shield TV and I'll let you guys uh, also know what I think about it when I actually unbox it and start uh, playing, playing with it as well. But other than that, I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions, drop them down below. Click that subscri subscribe, click that like button, and I will talk to you guys later.